back today guys and today we're going to go over painting with Tamiya paints and even though it's an acrylic paint uh, there is still um, precautions using this paint as you can see there's the danger and flammable sign on it and Tamiya uh, yes it's acrylic but you can't necessarily just wash your brush with um, water so if I try to wash my brush with water doesn't come clean that much. Um, to me it does sell a thinner. Um, I've personally had their thinner in my possession for about 20 years and you can see there's very little left but uh, it's lasted me a while. Back when it was still 12 bucks in Canada I think now they're about 20 bucks. Um, but yeah initially I only used this to thin the brushes which is obviously what it's meant to do. And uh, after years, I realized that uh, to me, a thinner was also just something else, and um, it's isopropanol alcohol basically. And I used two versions of it 70% and 90%. Uh, I noticed blending down acrylics with iso works a little better with 99%, but for cleaning your brush, you could see 70% works awesome. All right. So that's the thinner. Um, basically, you know, like I said, you can get 99%. Uh, this was 12 bucks. Uh, you can get a thing bigger than this for two bucks. So up to you what you want to do. Uh, for some reason, whenever I uh, thin down Tamiya to airbrush it though, I still use this, I don't know why, or 99%. I think it breaks down the pigments a little bit more. So, um, this is what I'm going to do our example on today. You can see there's a couple little wet areas in here. And what I'm doing is painting the base of this car with uh, Tamiya XF19. Um, Tamiya does have a couple different sizes. Actually, there's one more size. It's uh, almost the size of a tester's uh, jar like that. I'll probably bring one up on the screen. Um, so some things to keep in mind uh, when you use an acrylic paint, for example, Vallejo, uh, whether it's Model Air or their Model Color, um, painting directly on plastic usually doesn't work. Uh, acrylics need something to bite into on the plastic. So, but with Tamiya, because there's a chemical in the, the acrylic, it, uh, it doesn't need a primer. So if you grab some of the paint and paint right on the plastic, it has excellent coverage. One thing I did notice when I was younger using uh, Tamiya, and it actually made me stop using it for a while, is the paint is really thick. So yeah, it has good coverage, um, but it almost works similar to a Sharpie, where uh, if you do one coat, it'll have really good coverage, right? But as soon as you start going back over your initial coats, you could see it starts leaving brush strokes. All right. Now one way to alleviate that is grab a little bit of thinner and the thinner will essentially just level out the acrylic there. So now we don't have brush strokes, but it is getting a little thin. So we will need a second coat there. So here before I started the video, I did one heavy coat on the floor. And again, you could still see some areas are a little wet, which is fine. This is just the floor. I didn't want to mask everything here to just airbrush there. It was literally quicker to uh, just hand brush this. So I did a little bit heavier coat there. And in the back here you see I did a lighter coat. And that's dry already. Um, mind you, I did use a hair dryer to help dry this. And if you're going to use a hair dryer to um, help, help dry, remember that heat and flame don't go together. So that's your first uh, caution. Uh, second, you know, if you were to just turn on your hair dryer here, you'd blow everything out of the... So try to use your hair dryer out of the way. So it kind of helps dry it. So as I mentioned, it kind of works like a Sharpie. And uh, so what we're going to do is just fill in this back area here. Instead of getting this either second or final layer down. 
So you want to work with it quickly and don't go back over it once you've um, painted it because it will leave some nasty brush strokes. So you can thin it a bit more, that's fine. Um, I just think the color that Tamiya, the color line that Tamiya has is excellent. They literally make every color and uh, sometimes, you know, I, I really like using Tester's enamel too, but uh, the smell is just, it's, uh, it's too much. So uh, basically what I'm trying to say is Tamiya has an excellent flat black that I really like using on their wheels or on wheels to make them look like uh, rubber. Uh, and then, yeah, it's a toss-up between Tester's enamel or Tamiya's uh, flat black, XF1, I think it is. Um, they have both excellent results for uh, tires or flat uh, black rubber whenever you're trying to simulate just a uh, flat black. So here now I'm going over the first part we covered. And I'm going to try to keep it light to avoid brush strokes. So again, to me it has an excellent uh, line of paints and uh, this video is not aimed at their new lacquer lineup or I guess newer. This is uh, only for their acrylics. Um, and this video is only for brushing. I don't want to get into airbrushing and all that. I just want to show you guys how easy it is to paint with um, uh, Tamiya acrylics. So if you remember a few moments ago, I painted the, the front fenders up here. And you see when I did this first one coat, look at that. That's a wicked, uh, I, like the, I like how that turned out. A lot of paints, you can't do that one coat with a gray. Uh, and then you see the mess I made over here with the primer and doing multiple strokes over and over again. Um, so again, when you're painting, not necessarily just with Tamiya's, but uh, you know, basically any any line, uh, remember that you might have to do multiple coats. You won't have coverage on your first coat. Uh, when you start dealing with metallics, that uh, especially comes true. So here I got two of the same metallic grays. Let's see if I have a nice chrome silver. So there's my chrome silver. And even again with testers and they both have excellent chromes, but for chrome silver, uh, testers is, is the way to go. I've been using that chrome silver. It has the best uh, results but this chrome silver I use when I'm uh, either mixing paints because um, Tamiya's can be mixed together they can be also mixed with a few other companies because uh, they share the similar uh, uh, chemical properties so here's a couple other I'll show you guys one that I recently mixed up so this is a concoction of it is sky blue green, flat white, and khaki. So I'll show you what this color turned out to be like. Oh, maybe I'll give it a stir. So now let's get into stirring. With Tamiya's, I noticed that uh, I don't usually like um, shaking my uh, jars, but when with these Tamiya's, they have excellent uh, sealing capabilities on the inside of the rim. So when you're stirring, unless it's overfilled, this was overfilled a while back because I uh, just had too much paint in it. But uh, shaking them is fine. You see, that was just a few shakes. I, I, it is still overfilled, but you can see uh, generally the color that I'm going after there. Uh, now, typically at a hobby store, it's kind of weird because if you go buy empty jars of Tamiya, I think they're about two fifty. Um, but if you go buy, you know, a clear, it's three dollars, and essentially you're getting the clear with it. So uh, the guy at the hobby store said, oh, "I don't even know why they sell the empty bottles. Um, you, you're better off just getting, a, you know, a color." emptying the bottle out, cleaning it, so this color is almost done. As I was mentioning, I used it for that one there. Um, once this is empty, I'm just going to clean that bottle out and there's my empty bottle. All right. 
if you also have to uh, stir them manually rather than just shaking them. Um, I always keep straight screws off my models and then uh, I never use wood uh, or anything fibrous just so it prevents contamination into the jar. But uh, And then you can also use them for pouring and doing that prevents a spill. So. Also, if your lid's stuck, uh, you can lightly heat your jar up with some warm water. Don't use too hot because this is flammable. I don't think hot water can ignite uh, fumes like that, but uh, just be careful. So, I personally just used a lighter. I just held it away about a foot or 30 centimeters. They also have clear colors. So their clear colors essentially work like a candy. Um, now that you can put them over any color, but they do look best over a metallic. So this will be the last thing I go over. And I'll just get a fresh brush for this pen. So I'll just do it on my uh, blade here to show you guys. Maybe I should give it a stir, but uh, so this is how the clear works. See, if you put over a metallic like a silver, it gives you a nice anodized effect. Now, especially for the the clears, you can't um, you can't keep brushing it because if you do, you get these brush strokes with the the clear, and you can't fix them. You can add a little bit of uh, the the thinner, but again, with with um, the clears you have to do in one stroke and let it sit do not touch it and that's how you get uh, the best results with the clears uh, the clears are made of the same uh, chemicals as the solids so you can clean your brush the same way um, I use the clear red and clear blue for anodized stainless steel hosing on um, uh, motorsports and then you can use them for clear taillights and uh, for aircraft, so they work really well too. And yeah, I think that's all about uh, I have to say about just painting uh, with Tamiya. Uh, so I'll see you in a future video. And if you enjoy what you saw, check out some of my other videos where I talk about other paints and building other models. And there you go. Have a great day. Thanks.